Welcome back to the show, everybody. Today, I thought we'd take a look at some of the identifying features of everyone's favorite snake on the internet, the cottonmouth. As we have covered in the group on Facebook, Wild Snakes Education Discussion, and I've mentioned it several times here on the channel, there are two species of cottonmouth that are currently recognized in the United States the northern cottonmouth and the Florida cottonmouth. Both snakes have similar markings, similar appearance, so we won't differentiate between the two species today as we look at some photos. And today we're looking at photos on iNaturalist and all photos are public on iNaturalist. I'm not stealing anybody's photos when I make these videos, but I use the photos to illustrate my points. We'll take a look here at a typical adult cottonmouth. And of course, cottonmouths are venomous pit vipers. And they get the name pit viper from the presence of the heat sensing organs, the heat sensing pits between the eye and the nostril. And one of the first features we'll take a look at will get you to at least recognize a snake as a pit viper is they have this kind of flat top appearance to the head the canthus rostralis, the ridge that goes from the top of the eye all the way around the snout to the other eye. And that ridge kind of gives them an angular appearance from the side, but from the top, the top of the head kind of has a flat top appearance. Overhanging the eyes is this large ridged scale called the supraocular scale. Now, if you were looking directly down on this cottonmouth, you would not be able to see the eyes because of this scale is overhanging. Um, you can see the eye here on the right side of the snake. So if you're looking from the top down on a cottonmouth, one of the first things you would notice is you, you can't see the eyes because of the large overhanging scale. <laughs> Some people also like to mention that the scales on the top of the head look like a flower, right? Um, you can see it here. Um, that's that's another feature that you could look for. But again, as I al always mention, is don't rely on only one feature. So from this angle, we can see the overhanging scales, the large, heavy scales that cover the, the eyes, and then the flower-like pattern of the scales on top of the head. And on this cottonmouth, we can see the side view, the lateral view of the head, and it has that, that angular appearance from, like I said before, the top of the head has is flattened, and then it sharply angles off due to that ridge that runs around uh, the snout. We can see that very clearly here in this cottonmouth. Another thing that we can see on this cottonmouth is the dark stripe, the band that runs through the face and behind the eye and down past the head. Marking is referred to in many different ways, a Zorro mask, a bandit mask, a raccoon mask. On most cottonmouths, this is something to look for, is that dark mask that runs through the face. And here again, we can see on this individual the dark horizontal mask or stripe, whatever you want to call it. And it's on this one, it's bordered by some lighter markings. Another example of the mask here on this uh, nicely colored cotton mouth you can see that dark chestnut brown broad mask on the face of this cotton mouth. And here's a somewhat darker specimen uh, with a very dark face. The mask is uh, obscured, but you can still make it out. And of course the angular features and the heavy scale uh, over the eye, giving uh, most pit vipers an angry look because humans have that preconceived notion that snakes are evil, snakes are out to get you. So that angry look on the cottonmouth doesn't really 
do it any favors. Here's a really dark specimen. One of the reasons I always stress using several ID characteristics is because on a cottonmouth, you won't always recognize or be able to see that dark mass because there are dark individuals like this one that the entire face is dark. There's some light markings there, but you may not easily recognize this one as having the, the dark stripe on the face, but you can still see the flat top appearance, the, the kind of angular features on the face of this cottonmouth. So with experience, you'll be able to recognize this is at least, this is a venomous pit viper. When you see that, that appearance at the top of the head with the scales overhanging. Another dark cottonmouth. This one looks like it has mud caked on, dried mud, which is another thing that will obscure the markings of these snakes since they live in swamps and stuff like that. They often get covered in mud, which then dries we can't make out the facial markings on this one, but it does have, again, that flat appearance to the top of the head. You can see the ridge that I've mentioned previously and the, uh, the overhanging scale over the eyes. Learning how to identify snakes is, it takes time. It's, you know, it takes repetition. It's looking at these snakes over and over and over and over again. In the field is great, photos are great, online, and me, I've been studying snakes for my entire life, pretty much, but yet I keep at it, I keep looking at photos, keep looking at variations. Now this cotton mouth is showing the typical cotton mouth pattern. Now you see the edges of these, these kind of darker edgings, they're, they're irregular, they're they're jagged. They're what some might call pixelated. But you can see that the banding is very irregular. It breaks up in certain parts of the body at the end here. Um, some are more clear cut. And these, these uh, markings, these bands, again, they're not always visible. But when they are visible, you'll be able to recognize these bands um, as a cottonmouth. Now, there are some copperheads that also have these kind of irregular, irregular bands. But today we're focusing on the cottonmouth. So these irregular bands with the kind of jagged edges, um, the irregular nature of the bands that sometimes break up, Again, this is another feature that will help you recognize a cottonmouth. It's one of several features that we should be looking for. Here's another example of the irregular banding on a typical cottonmouth. Now those spots, those dots within the band, some people like to call that the bullseye marking. And again, that varies from snake to snake. Some have more than others. Some have fewer of these markings. So if you were looking at this snake in the wild, you would look at the face. You see the dark mask on the face. You see the angular appearance to the face. And then you see these irregular bands with the bullseye markings and the kind of the jagged appearance and irregular appearance of the bands. Here's another example of a cottonmouth with no visible markings on the body. The dark face mask is visible, and then the mouth is gaped open, revealing the white interior. And we'll go over that briefly. So in this photo, we can see where the cottonmouth gets its common name. It has this behavior called gaping, defensive gaping, where it opens the mouth wide, exposing the white interior. And the idea behind that is it should startle a predator, make the predator back up a little bit, think twice allowing the snake to escape or at least stand its ground. Now, many snakes have a white mouth. The cottonmouth's not the only one. It just so happens they were named after this behavior. So some people make the mistake of thinking, well, any snake that has 
a white interior of the mouth is a cotton mouth. So, of course, that's ridiculous, that's silly, that's not true. And then sometimes people say, well, they might look at this photo and say, oh, well, the mouth is pink, so it can't be a cotton mouth. So, yes, some cotton mouths have a pinkish tinge, a pinkish hue to the inside of their mouth, but that doesn't mean they're not a cotton mouth. This is obviously a cotton mouth. So don't put too much faith into the name cotton mouth when trying to identify these snakes. So here's a typical encounter you might have. You might see a cotton mouth in a swamp like this, kind of resting on a branch there, half in and half out of the water. You might look down upon this snake and you might see, aha, it has some irregular banding. It's kind of obscured by the dried mud but I can still make out the markings, the irregular banding with some spots along the side. And then we look down at the head, can't really see the eyes, can make out kind of that flat top appearance. And then we can see that flower marking, that stamp on top of the head. The scales have the impression of a flower and the scales overhanging the eyes. And then we can identify this snake as a cottonmouth. So keep at it. Keep looking at photos. Keep observing these snakes in the wild if you can, if you live within range. Ask questions. Ask questions in the comments below this video. And or join us in Wild Snakes Education and Discussion on Facebook if you have additional questions about how to identify a cottonmouth. And remember, it takes time and practice. You're not going to be able to have all of these ID skills overnight, in a week, in a month. But over time, if you keep at it, you will begin to recognize these snakes on sight. Like this one right here. The dark face stripe. The angular appearance to the snout, to the head. The irregular markings and the spots along the side, the spots in the center of some of the markings. And one thing I didn't mention was scalation. So cottonmouths have rough scales or keeled scales, which means in the center of each of these scales, there's a ridge that gives them this rough appearance. So that's another thing to, to look out for, even though water snakes also have keeled scales. But when we put together all of those ID factors that I mentioned with time and experience you'll be able to recognize this snake as a cottonmouth and notice I didn't touch upon color in today's video and that's okay because color does play a role in some species more than others but in general color should not be relied on and people tend to use color and lean on color heavily when trying to identify snakes. We have to account for natural variation. So learn how to identify snakes without relying only on color. Um, and you'll be much better off for it. You'll learn more that way. And your ID skills will be sharper that way over time. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Please share this video. Help me spread education, that's my mission. And I'll see you next time.